This tutorial is going to demonstrate using the blending option pattern overlay to create some textures in your Photoshop drawings. Now early on, uh, probably the first step for really any Photoshop rendering is just applying this base color and to put all these colors on unique layers. So we've got the grass on its own layer, shrubs on their own layer, so on and so forth. And what this allows us to do maybe change the colors independently, uh, but also to uh, take each layer and actually add uh, different blending options to them. In this case, we're gonna take the grass layer and by right clicking on it, we're gonna go to blending options and we're gonna apply a pattern overlay here. Now your base uh, patterns that you have in Photoshop, there's a few standard ones in here and this is a, a pretty traditional one. It's uh, basically a, a line that is at a 45 degree angle and as you change the scale, you can see it start to show up in my rendering right here. Now I'm going to cancel out of that because what I want to do is actually add some patterns to this list. Uh, there's a few standard ones in there, but what we can do is we can uh, go to different uh, sources on websites uh, and download a few different textures. So we'll start with this one. We've got uh, a photograph of grass. Uh, you'll see that it is uh, grass zero zero seamless. And seamless is the important word here. Any time that you're looking for a texture, you want it to be seamless so that as you sort of stack these or tile these next to each other, you can't really see those seams. So once you have them, you'll open them up in Photoshop and you'll just go to edit and define pattern. You can actually name it here. I typically don't just because I'm looking at the visual. So I'm just going to say OK. I'm going to do the same for these. Now once you do this uh, for each pattern, it actually is going to store it inside of your version of Photoshop, not any particular file. It will work on uh, across all your files uh, just by defining this pattern and it copies it and saves it in there. It's not a reference or anything like that. So I can actually close these and if they're on my desktop, I can delete them forever uh, because it is stored inside of Photoshop in a folder that it has embedded on your computer. So now I'm going to right click on this grass layer, go back to blending options, go to pattern overlay, and I'm going to pull down this list. And you can see I've got some other ones in here, but at the bottom are the three that we just created uh, by defining them as a pattern. I'll start with the latest one that we did, which is this uh, sketch feel right here. It's basically a square that has uh, what looks like a color pencil texture to it. You'll notice that I can bump up the scale of it uh, just to get that texture uh, to the right scale. I can turn back the opacity, even play with the blend mode, which is much like the layer mode. In this case, I'll, I'll multiply it to that one underneath. Uh, and then I'm going to sort of play with these adjustments. So I'm going to adjust that scale, and I might feel good about it, and click OK. Now, uh, what this does when you're multiplying more colors on top of it, I click the eye next to effects, it turns it off. You can see it darkens up your, uh, your grass layer here. So one of the things I'm gonna have to do is turn down the opacity. Now it's important to know the difference when you're turning down opacity. If you turn it down, it turn down, turns down both the color of the layer plus the effect uh, versus fill. Uh, when you turn it down, it actually only turns down the color, keeps the effect at 100%. In this case, the pattern is still on there. So you might play with uh, a few different versions of this to get it to the right uh, level. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna duplicate this layer just so I can try another grass option. In this case, I'll turn off the original. Uh, I can go here, right click to clear this layer style uh, to start over, or I could have frankly just right clicked and gone to pattern overlay and changed the one that I had. In this case, I'm gonna do the grass texture. You're gonna notice that that is massive, and so I'm gonna to have to change the scale down, and now you can see sort of the beauty of that seamless texture. You can't really see the squares and, and those tiles in there. Uh, if you get it small enough, you'll start to see it a little bit, just dark areas uh, start to show up. Now in this case, we put this texture on here, but I'd recommend against just doing everything photorealistic unless you've got a good game plan and a lot of layers for doing it. I think the bigger thing that you should be looking to do in your renderings is just create some texture, some dark spots, some light spots, and it's okay to dial back the opacity of this so much so that you really don't notice the green uh, of the grass blades or that particular texture, but you just sort of see and feel that texture instead of uh, seeing a photograph of grass here. So I'm gonna turn back the opacity and sort of play with this right here. Again, you can play with the different uh, modes between normal, uh, some nice like hard light. It's also a, an interesting one that I'll sometimes use in here. So you could repeat this for a lot of different uh, layers. I've got an aggregate layer here. Well, I'll go to the blending options first. I'm actually going to zoom in uh, to that layer right there. We'll right click and go to blending options. 
And uh, you'll notice that I actually have a pattern overlay for uh, that material as well. You can click on uh, this aggregate uh, right here, adjust the, uh, the size of it, and certainly the opacity in there as well. And it's also important to remember that the, uh, the absence of texture is also uh, a pretty strong texture that you can provide. Uh, in here, if we have everything textured, really nothing's going to stand out. But in this case, if I have uh, the hardscape, uh, or in this case the aggregates textured, the plant material, the grass, uh, and the fact that the concrete would still be kind of clean would actually help that to pop. Uh, and show it visually. So be careful not to over texture your drawings using blending options and pattern overlay. Uh, it's certainly one technique to on top of base color quickly add some some texture to your drawings.